Okay, so now we're ready to talk about the cluster adjustments in the vertical and roll axes. So you can see there's this screw here, which holds the cluster on the tower. There's one for every single uh, cluster. And you'll see that the clusters go from tallest on index down to middle, ring, and pinky. And that's very deliberate. You'll also notice that these are all rolled outwards like this. They are not flat, right? Uh, so that's critical for getting a good fit because you remember your hand is not flat either. Your fingers are gonna hit this at different heights and it's gonna be different for each finger. So this is my default kind of setup. I like the index finger rolled the most, a little bit less on middle, a little bit less on ring, and pinky rolled a little bit less than that. But I actually will, will use quite a bit of roll on the pinky as well, simply because the pinky has a tendency to kind of curl inwards, which lines it up better with a bit of roll. So in order to change something like here, uh, I'm just going to, let's imagine I just wanna move the cluster down. I'm just gonna loosen this screw half a turn and I can slide it down or up whatever, put it where I want. If I snug it down gently, then I can also just physically force it a little bit in roll and then snug it down again wherever I want it to be. And I'll use that to adjust how easy it is to hit the inwards keys versus the outwards keys. Same thing is true of each of the other clusters. And you're gonna go through this process where you are learning, you're typing stuff, you're seeing what errors you're making, and you're trying to tune to get rid of those errors. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about cluster roll. So that's the inward, outward rolling motion of the cluster. We wanna bias this so that the center key feels great, the inward key feels great, the outward key feels okay, and we're not accidentally hitting that outward key, and we're not missing the top of this inward key. Um, so the, the way that I do that generally is I just start with a little bit of roll outwards, and I type on it, and if it feels like I miss this key, if I move sideways and I just come over the top of it, then I'll know that it needs to be rolled uh, more outwards to put it more in the way of my finger in that inward motion. So there we go. So now this would be really biased to that inward key. And if I try and hit the outward key, I'll miss it a lot. And what you'll see is if you go and you use Kieber or Svalber, our uh, little weird fork of it, um, you'll get an error map that'll show you, you know, what letters you're hitting incorrectly. And if you find that you have characteristic errors on a key that's an inward key, like you're missing it, then you'll wanna roll it outward to make it closer to the finger. And if you find that you're uh, hitting it too often, you'll wanna roll it inwards to get it a little further away from the finger. And that's the whole tuning process, right? You might move the cluster forward or back to get different position relative to the south and north keys if you're making characteristic errors accidentally hitting one of those. And you might move the cluster uh, in roll this way in order to change how that works for the outward, or sorry, inward and outward laterals. It's pretty straightforward once you get the feel for it, but it does take time and you'll have to practice in order to really understand what's going on with your accuracy. So if you find that you're making one error a lot, like you're accidentally hitting this key a lot, yeah, move it away from you. If you find you're accidentally hitting this south key a lot, move it away from you. And other than that, uh, you know, after you tune the preset or sort of preload with the height to get your finger in just the right place so you're not resting too hard on the keys, and after you get the roll set up on the clusters so they feel pretty natural, you should be off to the races. You should go use monkey type, use Kieber, whatever it is uh, to get used to your layout. And you know, after that, it's just gonna be an iterative tuning process. So I know that this product asks a lot of you. Uh, you have to fit yourself, right? It's a, it's a prosthesis and it really takes some time to adapt to and it's a, it's a feedback loop. So be patient, be easy on yourself, practice short periods of time, you know, Start in the beginning, 15 minutes max, and then ramp that up to 20, 30, an hour a day. Some people go full-time in a couple of weeks, and that's awesome, but there's no hurry, uh, aside from whatever pain or discomfort you may be experiencing, right? Go easy on yourself, practice, then sleep. Your brain does a lot of its learning while you're sleeping. And if you do that, you'll be typing at full speed in, you know, probably a few months. You'll ramp up to it over time, but you'll be functional in, you know, between two and six weeks, and you'll have a great time.